Hello, my name is James and this is a video tutorial on going between Exercise 6 and ZBrush 3 and back again. This uh, came out of a discussion on ExerciseBase.com about uh, some issues about using ZBrush 3 in uh, your workflow. So this is just what I've discovered recently using these two pieces of software um, together for the first time and just contains some of my thoughts and ideas and a basic example. So this is a uh, tentacle mesh right here we have that is basically a cylinder that had some uh, polygons extruded along a curve to give us this nice uh, segmented tentacle mesh. I then used Roadkill version 1.1 which was discussed on exercise base forums uh, to create a UV layout in case I wanted to go back and paint this um, and to give my displacement map uh, some coordinates once I go into uh, ZBrush. So, that's all been frozen. I'm going to take this mesh and export it. Uh, OBJ file. Uh, we'll export this to the models folder. And we'll call this uh, tentacle XSI created 01. And this will let us know that this object was created in XSI. So we'll go ahead and save that out. And now we're going to close this down and bring up uh, ZBrush 3. So once in here, we'll import our uh, OBJ file we just created. Now we'll go ahead and draw that onto the canvas and go into edit mode. So there it is. So uh, for my workflow, I don't need um, the final mesh to look exactly like what we have right here. Um, if your workflow requires that, for example, if you're given an object and they tell you uh, this has already been animated so we can't have you moving around any of the uh, vertex points, your displacement map has to displace on top of this geometry, then you can go over here and under Morph Target click Store MT. This stores the UV position of all the points in this object. Uh, because as we subdivide this object in ZBrush and uh, sculpt it, we will be on the lowest base level moving these points around slightly. And you'll see that later on once we get uh, near the end of the ZBrush part of this tutorial. So for now we stored our morph target, we'll close that out, and we'll bring up our geometry option, and we'll start dividing. Now normally I like to go ahead and get a um, object that has around 1 million polygons. But for now, since I'm recording this and running XSI and ZBrush all at the same time, which I don't normally do, we'll just say bring this up to... Well, let's divide one more time. And that gives us um, 208,000 polygons. We'll even go one more further and bring this up to uh, 835,000 polygons. So that's what we're looking at when we look at this mesh right now. And you can see it's smoothed out greatly. Let's drop it down to, say, uh, sublevel 3. And right now, all I'm going to do is just start roughing up one side of this uh, tentacle. We'll go to our alpha uh, brushes. I'm going to choose the vein brush. We'll work with that for now. Uh, stroke uh, tool is fine. And we'll turn up our intensity to, say, 50. So let's go ahead and, and just start painting some slight um, displacement, or rather just uh, sculpting this tentacle a little bit. So there, we've roughed up one edge of it. And uh, I do not have symmetry turned on. Uh, this is just one side of the tentacle, and I'll explain my reasoning for that in a few moments. So let's divide this uh, one time. You can see we've roughed up this uh, tentacle now. It's got some bulges. Um, so we'll Let's bring down our intensity a little bit, down to say 20. And we'll now switch to the uh, drag rectangle tool. And now I'm just going to drag on uh, some more of this veins right here. And you can see them a bit more clearly now because we have our uh, tentacle subdivided a bit better. So go ahead and add some to the tip there. I'm going to go ahead and divide um, again. 
and actually divide one more time. Let's start getting into some fine details here. So now, yes, there, here you can really see the joy of working in ZBrush. This, this really nice detailed uh, geometry. Now I'm not attempting to blend this in. Uh, you can see it's repeating quite a bit. But what I want to have here is a model that has some overall uh, roughing up as well as some detailed, highly detailed uh, veins. So that's looking pretty good. I'm going to leave that here for now. And if I go to my highest level of uh, subdivision, you can see this really smooths out. You can really see, you know, these these veins are really popping out from this tentacle. So let's drop it down uh, to say subdivision four, or maybe even say five. And on the opposite side of this tentacle, what I'm going to do is use a different alpha. And I'm going to explain my reasons for this. We'll use this sunburst alpha for now, and we'll increase our uh, Z intensity. Let's bring it, well, I'll leave it around 50 or so. So using the stroke uh, brush, we'll go ahead with this alpha, and we'll just paint in some nice sunburst here. The reason I'm doing this is to demonstrate that something I've encountered when I've been using XSI and ZBrush is that if I bring in a model from ZBrush, which is what we're going to do in this tutorial, occasionally, well, most of the time it seems, the model will come in um, flipped along uh, the axis where my uh, pointer is. In other words, it seemed to be scaled. Um, in this case, we're sure that when we look at the tentacle this way, we have veins, and when we look on this side, we have the sunburst. So, there we go. We've got um, our tentacle ready to go. We're happy with it. We want to see this when we go into XSI. So, first thing we're going to do is drop to the lowest subdivision. Now, I'm going to take a quick moment here and uh, demonstrate what has happened. Uh, you'll notice this is a lot smoother uh, than when than what we originally had. And I'm going to go to our morph target and switch qu quickly. This is what we originally brought in uh, from XSI. This here is what ZBrush has determined is uh, the best base level. And we're going to use what ZBrush says. The reason behind this is that ZBrush uh, using this base and the displac displacement map will generate uh, will work better together than if we force it to use um, our morph target. Again, this depends on workflow. If you're given a model that, and you can't change the UV, or rather the uh, vertex placement, then you would generate your displacement map from this morph target. Uh, in this case, uh, what I've done with my recent workflow is if I uh, wanted to, say, animate this tentacle, Right now, if I turn on frames, you can see there's not many polygons there. So for this tutorial, I'm actually going to go up to subdivision 2, which gives me, um, you know, a little more to play with, some more polygons here um, to animate with, um, to uh, just use in general. So I'm going to delete the lower subdivision. So now this is our base subdivision right here. And the, the more polygons you have to start with, uh, the easier it is for XSI to uh, generate a good displacement map. So uh, we're better off with a slightly higher poly object and it would be easier to um, envelope and animate anyway. So let's quickly uh, go to our displacement settings. I'm going to use uh, the highest value ZBrush uses, which is 4096 for our um, displacement map our resolution. Smooth UV is on. I leave DP subpix off. Uh, in ZBrush 2 this worked well. In ZBrush 3 it tends to mess with my displacement map. It tends to flatten it out and make it kind of useless. So we'll make sure mode is on. So we have uh, smooth UV and mode on. And now we will click uh, create displacement map. Uh, ZBrush will think for a bit. And uh, there it's been created. Now I'm going to stop here for a second and uh, we'll come back to this tutorial uh, in a moment and uh, go from uh, our displacement map to XSI.